What's up, fam? Welcome back to another Hydrosynth uh, patch exploration video. And today's video is a request of sorts from Faceman VA6021. And Faceman VA6021 has a had left a comment on a, a previous video of mine where I had a self-generative patch on the Hydrosynth and uh, my modular synthesizer. Uh, and they requested that I do a self-generative patch on the Hydrosynth alone. So uh, <laughs> I've done a video similar to this uh, previously, and whoop, and uh, I, I had titled it Complex Arpeggios or something like that. And um, the, basically, th they're the same thing, I think, or uh, I guess it's, the, it's, a sim it's a similar technique. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So first oscillator... Wave scan, wave list, edit, hold shift, select some waves. Let's just kind of scroll to the bottom there. And then for the next set, let's just keep scrolling through there. Uh, we can modify that later if we so choose, but all of the waves in the hydrocent are pretty, pretty good to me. Uh, let's see. For oscillator two, we'll pretty much do the same thing. Hold down shift and go through the first bank of four. Let's select some waves. Let's just keep scrolling. And then for the last four, we'll scroll a little further. Uh, looks fine. And then for oscillator three, we don't have the option of having a um, uh, wave list to edit. It's just a single waveform, but that uh, I find to be to our advantage, especially in something like this, because I like to use that third oscillator uh, as a sine wave. Uh, an octave below, sometimes two octaves below. It comes by default as an octave below, and it just kind of holds down the low end uh, for the patch, uh, kind of create a baseline. Um, and with the LFO that we use to modulate oscillator three's pitch, we will go a little bit slower uh, with the division of the beat. We'll divide that down a little bit more to kind of give a little bit of a a, a bass, a drone uh, in our in our patch, uh, something to kind of anchor the whole thing down with. So now that we've populated our wave list for oscillator one and two and selected the sine wave for oscillator three, now here's where things are going to get fun. <laughs> Uh, let's hold down LFO3 and select oscillator 1. That will modulate the pitch of oscillator 3 in a positive direction. Uh, and we'll use LFO4 on oscillator 2 and have that modulate. Oh. LFO3, oscillator 1, pitch. Uh, while in this menu, you got to remember to click the next uh, slot in the modulation matrix. Otherwise, it'll repopulate the last slot with the new modulation uh, source and destination. Otherwise, just hit exit, and then you can are free to assign within the context of that. Uh, and then we'll use LFO5 on oscillator 3's pitch in a positive direction. It can be positive or negative. doesn't really matter. In fact, you can use some of the other LFOs to control the pitch of uh, how, how far the pitch swings for the different oscillators, but I like to keep things simple. Uh, we'll just use a positive direction for uh, these first three modulation source and destinations. Um, now, for the somewhat more interesting part, we'll go and have uh, some of the opposite oscillators, or uh, how should I put this? The uh, preceding LFOs uh, modulate the wave of the opposite oscillators. So since we have LFO3 modulating the pitch of oscillator 1, we'll have LFO3 modulate the wave list of oscillator 2. So we'll go to the wave scan and have that go in a positive direction. And then we'll have LFO4, do the same to oscillator 1. 
in a positive direction. Uh, now, we can back out of that, go into our LFO 3 and 4, and start to modulate things. So we'll go to the beat sync, turn the beat sync on. Um, you don't have to turn beat sync on. Uh, I, I like to, just in case at some point later you're going to plug it into the computer or uh, plug it into a MIDI source and have something else sync synced to it. Uh, keeping things in this early stage all locked to a beat uh, just makes things a little bit more helpful down the road. If you're not planning on doing that and you just want to use the Hydrosynth on its own, then you can skip that. Just leave beat sync off and go ham on the, the rate for these LFOs. Uh, but we'll stick to this method for now. So I'll go to the uh, rate and I'll set this first one uh, let's say a half, half notes. Um, we'll set the wave to step. We'll go to this semi-lock and turn that on. Uh, now when you're in this stage, you can set the steps up to 64. And here's where things kind of get very interesting. If you set a long amount of steps at an odd length, say 59 for LFO 3, uh, and then something equally as long on LFO 4 and 5. Now remember these are modulating the pitch, uh, as well as the wave scan, these f the LFO 3 and 4 rather. So we'll go into LFO 4, uh, we'll set that to a step wave, beat sync on. For this one, I'm going to put, put it at a triplet half. So it'll be slightly out of sync with the first oscillator's pitch. Uh, for oscillator 3, oh, don't forget to go and turn the semi-lock on, and we'll set this steps to, f say, 47. Uh, again, an odd length, so it'll beat against the first sequence, quote, sequence. Uh, now we'll go into LFO 5, which is modulating the pitch of oscillator 3 here. Go into beat sync. We'll put that on a dotted whole note. Uh, so that'll be quite quite long uh, in, con in, in relation to the others. Set that to a step wave as well. Turn the semi-lock on. And this one, remember we kind of want this one to be the, the ground uh, so we'll set that to a somewhat shorter uh, 34. Uh, now we're going to go through and edit the steps for all this. On LFO 3, back to LFO 3, we'll go into the second page here. And this smooth, one thing that's very interesting about this, uh, as you start to edit these steps for the LFO, you can go into the smooth and that effectively is your glide at this point between your notes. So go into this and just start setting some values. I like to keep things uh, at this stage very, very simple. Uh, so I'll say 0, uh, plus 5, plus 7, minus 5, and minus 7. Those are the values that I tend to stick to. You can pick other values, obviously, if you would like. Personally, I stick to 0, plus 5, plus 7, minus 5, minus 7, uh, plus and minus 12. So I'm going to just be going through this now and populating everything seemingly at random, uh, just with a bunch of plus and minus 5, 7, and 12s. So, uh, I will probably fast forward through this a little bit so you guys don't have to. Okay, I just saved that, uh, so that we didn't lose anything just in case. Uh, now we can listen to that really quick. <laughs> Uh -huh. 
we have to turn all the oscillators up. Beautiful. Sounding gorgeous. So, uh, let's see here. Maybe it would help if we go into this wave list, turn one of them all the way up. Let's see, LFO 4 is affecting the wave scan of oscillator 1, LFO 3 is affecting the oscillator scan of oscillator 2, so we just turned the wave, s wave scan all the way up on oscillator 1, so we'll go in here to LFO 4, uh, turn the modulation matrix for the wave scan to a negative degree. Be able to hear that a little bit better uh, when we have the other oscillator working together. And we'll go ahead and populate that list now. Okay, I'm going to go into smooth, smooth that sucker out a little bit. <laughs> Sounds great. Save it. Uh, moving on, LFO 5 is affecting oscillator 3. And you know what? As we're auditioning this, delay is always good. <laughs> Beautiful. How about some delay, or some reverb now for that delay? Uh, my personal favorite has always been plate, so we'll stick with that. Give it a long, long time. Crank up that dry wet. Yeah, now we're getting somewhere. Let's save that. Go back into LFO 5. Uh, go into the semi-lock. We're at 34 steps for this. Uh, again, we'll speed that whole thing up. Uh, exit out of that. We'll give it some smooth. Okay, that sounds pretty good. So, uh... Let's, uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and start to adjust some of the mutators now. Um, I'll just latch that down and we'll affect some mutators and we'll have the LFOs affect the mutators as well. Uh, start with LFO 5, mutating mutant 1 here. Uh, let's pick a good mutator see so that we can hear what's going on. I'll turn down the other oscillators. We'll go back into the mutator one. Turn up the dry wet. see if one trick here with the ratio uh, for any of these if you hold down the shift button it'll lock to a pl more pleasing value All right, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool indeed. So let's have LFO uh, 4 affect the uh, mutant 1. Uh, let's see. Well, let's have LFO th 5 affect mutant 1. Not the ratio, but the wet-dry mix, because I kind of like what's happening there. Uh, 
let's see, we just want to add a little bit to it. So I'll exit out of that, go back into the mutator one, turn it all the way down, and just adjust the modulation there in the matrix, uh, in the matrix, to make it sound good. Give that a little bit more. Go on to LFO5, see what's going on there. Modulation matrix. How about we use LFO2? LFO1 and 2 now. Uh, to start affecting some of these other parameters. So we'll use LFO2. We'll go into LFO2. Uh, sine wave is good here. Sine wave uh, or triangle wave I find for LFO1 and 2 uh, kind of work the best here uh, in these applications. So we'll go to the mutant again. We'll go back into the modulation matrix uh, and see how much... <laughs> Turn that down a little bit more. So if we turn down the rate of the effective modulator here. Fantastic. Uh, let's also do something similar here with the Mutator 2. Uh, let's turn that right up. <laughs> Linear FM. <laughs> Bit harsher of a sound. I like that wave stack just fine, so let's use that uh, wave stack. Let's use that LFO2 on mutator 2 to turn up the ratio. Actually, let's use LFO 1 to kind of beat against those, and we'll have LFO 1 and 2 affect the mutator 3 and 4 as well uh, for oscillator 2. So let's go into oscillator, or LFO 1 rather. Um, LFO 1, we'll turn the beat sync right on. We we'll use a triangle wave this time, and still going pretty slow. Uh, let's go down here to the smooth and kind of smooth that out, but also let's uh, before we smooth, let's quantize the crap out of it so that it's all stair-steppy. And then kind of cut back on that. <laughs> go back into our mixer and turn oscillator 2 up. <laughs> Perfect. Go back into this LFO 1. Uh, triangle wave, it's all stair-steppy. Uh, I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Uh, I'll cut the phase to 45, have it fade in, uh, about just a little bit of a fade in. Love it. Uh, let's go to save that sucker, uh, go into Mutant 3, we'll find something good. Let's go into the Pulse Width Squeeze, PW Squeeze. Turn down Oscillator 1 so we can hear what's happening. Oh yeah, that's Pulse Width is getting squeezed to all, to all heck. Uh, <laughs> so, uh... Let's see. Maybe a high 
higher ratio. Yeah, I like that a lot. So we can affect the feedback. Or we can affect the dry wet. Or ratio or depth here. Uh, let's see. Let's use LFO 1 on mutant 3. And uh, let's see what it sounds like on the ratio first. Let's see. I'll go back into mutant 3. Yep. And we're just auditioning oscillator 2. So we'll go into that LFO 1. That's a little bit too wacky. Uh, let's go to the depth. It's a little bit too wacky. Let's see if we back off a little bit. Still a bit buzzy, in my opinion. Uh, let's try the feedback. I think our dry wet here is going to be the best uh, option. Let's see, where are we at with the dry wet? We're cranked right up. Uh, so let's go and turn that down with the LFO. We can even go back into the mutator and turn that down. Now we're getting somewhere. Let's save that. Let's go into our BPM. You go to the BPM by holding shift and the arpeggio on. Uh, let's turn our BPM down to 69, baby. All right, we'll turn up oscillator one, see where we're at. Fantastic. Let's go to mutator four. Uh, let's see, I don't believe. Uh, yep, LFO two is now going to affect mutant four. Uh, let's see, we don't have anything set up for Mutant 4, so let's go to Mutant 4 to find something interesting. Uh, phase difference. What's that going to sound like? Turn down oscillator 1, oscillator 2, mutator. Yeah, I like that. Let's get kind of a vocal quality to it. So let's have that modulate. Uh, what is the depth going to do here? Yeah, it looks like the depth is going to be our most uh, useful modulation destination. So let's go into the matrix, LFO2, mutant 4, depth. And let's see where we're at. We're going to turn that down and have the LFO turn it up. Uh, just slightly because that was pretty effective uh, sound design uh, matrix. Let me turn it up just a little bit. Let's also have it uh, at the same time that it's turn. Well, let's have it turn down the depth slightly and have it turn up the wet dry mix. So we'll go back into the modulation mat matrix. We'll select the source and destination. Still mutant for depth. This time we're going to turn it down uh, slightly. And we'll go into the next slot. We'll have the. Uh, LFO 2 effect mutant 4, oh, mutant 4, and we'll 
I'll have that be the wet dry mix in a positive amount. <laughs> Yeah, I like that a lot better. So let's go back into our mixer, turn up oscillator 1. Uh, oscillator 3 doesn't really need much because it is just that sine wave. Uh, so that's that's going to be just fine. Now let's explore. Uh, this, this patch is feeling pretty done to me. Let's go ahead and save what we've got so far. I haven't messed with any of the envelopes here, and I haven't messed with the filter or the pre and post effects. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and do some filtering, and then I'll get to some effects, uh, and then we'll just wrap this up. Uh, so LFOs 3, 4, and 5 are our, are our most complex. 1 and 2 are a bit more simple, and they're handling the modulation for the mutators. Also, the LFO 1 and 2 modulate the filter 1 and 2, and let's have LFO 3, 4, and 5 modulate some of the effects. Uh, in my opinion, that's how you're going to get some of the most complicated sounds here, is by having some simple things be modulated by some of the uh, mutators and filters, and then having the more complicated uh, LFOs, more compl complex LFOs, rather, uh, modulate your effects. Uh, again, I haven't even messed with the envelopes, and in this patch, I'm not going to at this time. Uh, so let's go ahead and use uh, LFO1 is already kind of pre-routed to the filter filters. Uh, so let's just stay with that because it would be easy and we wouldn't need to take up a modulation matrix uh, slot. Uh, even though the, in the hydrosynth we have plenty, let's just go ahead and save one in case we need it for later. Uh, LFO1, let's see if we back out of all this, we could just go into our filter. Uh, and see right there, LFO1 amount is already attached to the filter. So let's go down. Let's go down a lot. Turn up the resonance so we can really hear what's going on. Brilliant. I kind of already like where that's at. Uh, let's see, I'll just move the low pass. It's kind of default at low pass ladder 12. Uh, and I'm going to move that to low pass fat 24, which just doesn't roll off the base whenever it uh, the filters got some resonance. The, the base is kind of still there. You still retain a lot of low end. That. I like that just fine. Let's just kind of roll off a little bit of the cutoff initially. Yep, that's exactly what I wanted. Uh, so now let's go into filter 2. Uh, and let's kind of do the opposite there. Let's have them fight against each other. So in filter 2, you have the option of being in low pass, band pass, high pass, or low pass notch high pass. I prefer the initial state of low pass band pass high pass. Uh, just kind of makes more sense to me in this fact, uh, or in this uh, kind of a patch. So again, I'll crank up the resonance a little bit, not too much. I'll increase the cutoff. And right now with the morph at 128, you're in that, uh, let's see, it's easier to kind of show. You're in that. High pass, low pass territory with the morph. And then as you start to move the cutoff is where you can have a band pass somewhere in the middle. Really groovy type of filter. So I'll stick it kind of the cutoff kind of in the middle here, and put the morph down just a little bit. And I'll have the LFO effect the cutoff, because that's kind of what it's attached, or not kind of, that is what it's attached to, is the cutoff 
of the filter, so I'll have that affect it in a positive going direction, uh, but keep the filter cutoff kind of low. <laughs> Now I'm going to have LFO2 affect the morph of the filter. And already that is sounding really, really self self-generative. Uh, so I'll go ahead and save that again, because I really like what's going on here now, uh, just by pure happenstance. And uh, we'll go into filter 1, uh, LFO 2 to filter 1 modulation, and we'll say since LFO 1 is already taking care of the cutoff of that, we'll have LFO 2 control the amount that's going to LFO 1. How about that? Uh, and increase that. See what that sounds like. Sure, why not? Now, I'm going to take these three LFOs and affect the uh, delay, reverb, and pre and post effects. Uh, we don't have anything for pre and post effects yet, so let's let's remedy that. Uh, chorus is a good option, especially for a patch like this. Kind of livens up the whole thing. <laughs> Lovely. Now let's have. Uh, let's see if we just. One of my favorite ways to figure out a, a destination is to crank up uh, whatever you really want to be affecting or whatever you're thinking about affecting and uh, dialing it back down and having some subtlety in there. So I'll crank the depth on this first of all, see what that sounds like. Oh yeah, that's going to be something that would be effective to modulate. So I'll crank the depth down a significant amount here. Uh, and then I'll have, let's say, uh, LFO3 affect the... It, says, it just says parameter 1 and parameter 2 <laughs> for uh, the effect. Um, let's try parameter 1 first, see, see what parameter 1 is. Okay, that does, that does feel like the, the depth control. Just to make sure, though, we'll check out what parameter 2 is doing. For some reason, that feels like the rate. I don't know why. Either way, whatever's happening on parameter 1 is just fine, <laughs> so we'll, we'll leave that. Uh, let's see, we'll go LFO4 is going to affect the delay and reverb. Uh, let's see, LFO4 to delay, not the time, but the feedback. Uh, we'll have it crank up the feedback. <laughs> Sure. And we'll also have LFO4 affect the timing of the reverb and just crank that all the way up. Kind of scale back the LFO4 to feedback of the delay while we're cranking up the time of the reverb. Oh yeah, we're getting pretty wild here now. 
Uh, let's go to the post effects. Uh, let's see what we've got for options here. Uh, Lo-fi, that could be cool. Tremolo, that could be pretty cool. Uh, let's see what lo-fi is like. Lo-fi might be a cool option. Uh, let's see, tremolo might be a cool option. Let's try tremolo for now. Uh, let's have LFO 5 affect the tremolo's uh, dry wet mix, and hopefully it affects the rate as well. Let's try parameter 1, uh, and I'll go back into the post effects and just crank up the dry wet mix, and let's see. Turn the rate down. Let's see, try parameter two. So if we go uh, scale that back just a little bit and go into the other one and scale uh, reverb time, we'll go into LFO 5 to post effects uh, and dry wet mix, and we'll have it go and kind of dial it back a little bit. Just so that sound doesn't drop all the way out. And if we go back into some of our initial kind of conditions and turn things up and down, they have a little bit more subtlety instead of being so freaking extreme. Anyway, I really like what's going on here, so uh, let's just save that patch. By the way, do the whole like and subscribe thing if you have liked this video, want to see more stuff like this, maybe similar. Uh, if you have an idea for something, maybe a topic on Hydrosynth that uh, you would like to know, uh, go ahead and shoot a comment. Anyway, hope you guys have a great day. Let's listen to this uh, weird sound that we've just made.
again, I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, hit the like button, do the subscribe thing, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.